Welcome to All Home Care Matters, the show where we discuss all things home care with discussions on important age-related matters and topics. Brought to you by Enriched Life Home Care Services, the number one rated home care provider in Michigan by top rated local. Hello, and welcome back to All Home Care Matters. If this is your first time visiting us here at the show, we want to say thank you for taking time out to be with us today. We appreciate how valuable everyone's time is, and that's why we try and make each episode here at All Home Care Matters something that will hopefully matter to you. Today's Quick Tips episode is congruent with our series on the seven stages of Alzheimer's disease. We've been talking a lot about Alzheimer's lately, but it's an important topic that we could never exhaust. Today's Quick Tips episode is about recognizing Alzheimer's disease. First, we'll discuss what Alzheimer's is. Then, we'll move on to some of the common signs and symptoms of Alzheimer's and what to do when you notice signs. And finally, we'll talk about resources, tips, and tools to help families dealing with Alzheimer's. Now, let's move on to the rest of the show. The National Institute on Aging explains that Alzheimer's disease is a brain disorder that slowly destroys memory and thinking skills and eventually the ability to carry out the simplest task. The disease is named after Dr. Alois Alzheimer. In 1906, Dr. Alzheimer noticed changes in the brain tissue of a woman who had died of an unusual mental illness. Her symptoms included memory loss, language problems, and unpredictable behavior. After she died, he examined her brain and found many abnormal clumps, what we now call amyloid plaques, and tangled bundles of fibers, what we now call neurofibrillary, or tau tangles. Alzheimer's disease affects more than 6 million Americans over 65. This number is not including those under 65, usually in their 30s or 40s diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's. Currently, the biggest known risk factor for Alzheimer's disease is age. As our population continues to rise, so will the number of Alzheimer's cases. According to the Alzheimer's Association, the most common early symptom of Alzheimer's is difficulty remembering newly learned information. The NHS, the UK's biggest health website, lists some of the early symptoms of Alzheimer's as forgetting about recent conversations or events misplacing items, forgetting the names of places and objects, and having trouble thinking of the right word, asking questions repetitively, and showing poor judgment or finding it harder to make decisions, and becoming less flexible and more hesitant to try new things. If you are noticing symptoms in yourself or in a loved one, it's a good idea to start a journal or at least write down a list of symptoms when they appear so that you can have a log to take with you to your doctor. And the next thing, and possibly the first thing you should do, is schedule an appointment with your doctor. A physician will be able to determine if you have Alzheimer's or if there are any other medical problems going on. Your risk for developing Alzheimer's increases with a family history of Alzheimer's. If you have family members that have had Alzheimer's, make sure that your doctor is aware of this. Your doctor may want to do some testing to see if you have any genetic markers for the disease or to test for Alzheimer's. If you have the genetic markers for Alzheimer's, that doesn't mean that you will develop Alzheimer's, but that you have the chance of developing Alzheimer's. There is no way to actually prevent Alzheimer's, but there are some ways to lower your risk of developing it. Eating a healthy diet and exercising your body and mind may help lower your risk. According to the Bright Focus Foundation, researchers are trying to understand if how we eat and what types of foods we eat will lower your risk of developing Alzheimer's. Eating a diet high in whole grains, fruits, vegetables, and fish, and low in sugar and fat, such as the Mediterranean diet, can reduce the incidence of many chronic diseases, such as heart disease and type 2 diabetes. Scientists are currently studying if eating healthy can reduce your risk of developing Alzheimer's, and you may find that eating well increases your greater overall health. The Bright Focus Foundation also says that physical exercise is an important part of a healthy lifestyle, and some studies suggest that it can improve cognitive agility. For an Alzheimer's patient, exercise may also help maintain muscle strength, decrease frailty, and elevate mood. 
Some research suggests that exercising our brain through activities like reading, learning a musical instrument, or playing chess can help protect people from cognitive decline later in life, which is what people with Alzheimer's experience. The last thing Bright Focus Foundation recommends to lower your risk is to decrease your risk of head traumas. We are learning from people with battlefield or sports injuries that past traumatic head injuries may be associated with Alzheimer's. Your risk increases if the injury involved you losing consciousness or if you've had multiple head injuries from playing contact sports. This discovery is fueling public health efforts to improve the protective quality of helmets and reduce the rates of head injuries in certain sports. If you or your loved one has Alzheimer's and you or your family are wondering how to support a loved one with Alzheimer's, the Alzheimer's Association is a good place to start. First, they recommend that you educate yourself about Alzheimer's disease and learn about its signs and symptoms and how you should talk to a loved one with Alzheimer's. Next, they say you should stay in touch. A card, a call, or a visit means a lot and it shows that you care. The person diagnosed with Alzheimer's isn't the only one dealing with a new, stressful situation. Their friends and family are also adjusting to this new diagnosis and could use all the support they can get as well. Then, they say it's important to be patient. Adjusting to an Alzheimer's diagnosis is an ongoing process and each person reacts differently. If you can, offer a shoulder to lean on. The disease can create stress for the entire family and simply offering your support and friendship is helpful. You should also try to engage the person with dementia in conversation. It's important to involve the person in conversation even when his or her ability to participate becomes more limited. They may be feeling isolated from others during this time, and you taking extra care to include them will make them feel special and cared for. When you are available, offer to help the family with their to-do list. Prepare a meal, help run an errand, or provide a ride. You should also try to engage family members in activities. Invite them to take a walk or participate in other activities. They may not take time for themselves after a loved one has been diagnosed with Alzheimer's. And similarly, offer family members a reprieve. Spend time with the person living with dementia so family members can go out alone or visit with friends. Your help can enable the family members and the person with Alzheimer's to all participate in their normal lives, which they might not be able to do without support from others. When you're supporting someone with Alzheimer's and their family, it's important to be flexible. Don't get frustrated if you offer for support is not immediately accepted the family may need time to assess its needs. When supporting those affected by Alzheimer's, the Alzheimer's Association also says that you should support the Alzheimer's cause. Supporting Alzheimer's either financially or with your time helps your loved ones with Alzheimer's too. Knowing that other people in their community care about their situation can help them feel connected and cared for during a time when they are most likely feeling uncertain with their position in life. If you're interested in learning more ways you can support someone with Alzheimer's or their loved ones, visit our show notes for the resources. And we want to say thank you for joining us here today at All Home Care Matters. All Home Care Matters is here for you and to help families as they navigate these long-term care issues. And we invite you to please visit us at allhomecarematters.com where there's a private, secure, fillable form where you can give us feedback, show ideas, or if you just have questions. Every form is read and responded to. And please, if you know someone who could benefit from this episode, please make sure to share it with them. And remember, you can listen to the show on any of your favorite podcast streaming platforms and watch the show on our YouTube channel. Just make sure to hit that subscribe button so that you never miss an episode. We look forward to seeing you next time here at All Home Care Matters. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. We look forward to you joining us again on another episode of All Home Care Matters. To learn more about the show and to connect with us, visit us at allhomecarematters.com.